Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Soundflow webinar. Uh, today, I have joining me uh, Dustin Harris, who is a supervising sound editor and dialogue editor with Sound Dogs Toronto. And he's worked on shows such as Lock and Key for Netflix, The Expanse for Amazon, and The Shape of Water uh, for Fox Searchlight. And as a member of the Soundflow developer program, uh, he's been hard at work working on his first app, uh, guide a line that he's uh, here to show you how it works. Sweet. Dustin, how are you, mate? I'm good. How are you, Kitch? Great, man. Awesome. How's the weather there? Oh, it's it's actually not bad for Toronto coming out of weather-ish time of year. It's all right. Yeah, it, it, it looks like uh, you're in a nice um, uh, isolated studio there. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. in a typical post-production edit suite, so it means I don't get to see the sun for 12 hours at a time unless I am able to get out for lunch. But of course, you know, story you know. of our lives. <laughs> Indeed. I got to ask, uh, did you write that little, uh, the tune coming in? No, I didn't, but it does sound like something that I've made in the past. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. A bit of library music, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, so today you're, uh, you've created uh, this new app, uh, Guideline, that is on the Soundflow platform. Um, tell me, what does it do? Okay, so... This is going to get a little bit specific for post workflow. So if we have people joining us with a music background, this might not make a ton of sense, but bear with us. So uh, in some post workflows, particularly like in North America, uh, we've kept this hybrid sort of system where we're still working or we are working digitally now, but we still maintain a film like workflow. So what does that mean in practical terms? It means that we get all of our sound files and we get the elements from the picture editor, for instance, like a QuickTime video and guide tracks and whatnot. But instead of getting an AF, which would have all of our audio contained in like one file, you just open it up and start working. Uh, what we do in our old sort of hybrid workflow is we get what's called an EDL file, which is basically a text file that says this file goes here from this this time code to this time code and this file goes here from this time code to this time code etc and we rebuild the entire edit that they've done in the picture editing suite in the sound edit suite with this text file it's called an edl so what does that have to do with the app that i wrote well there can be inconsistencies and discrepancies between where the audio ends up in our system versus where it ends up in a picture editing system and the reason for that is I think picture editors, unless you set them up in very specific ways, when you bring in a file, it'll just put it at whatever frame is closest to it or the very first frame of the session, et cetera. But what if the file's not supposed to be exactly on a frame? What if it's supposed to be in between frames? Of course. Yeah. Picture editors just, they don't really care about audio yeah. that much. T totally. And, and also, I, I'm sure like different brands of uh, field recorders have certain amounts of delay Correct. Uh, when, when they're recording. So, yeah, I, I do know I've done I've done a very small amount of post work and I have uh, come across uh, when bringing, you know, re resyncing up audio. It's just, you know, there there's, you know, there are like either a frame off or even yeah. just, you know, micro um, you know, like samples out. And so, yeah. So. Yeah, that's well, perfectly put. That's exactly it. And that's in the broad strokes. That's exactly why I wrote this program, because often we get our part of the job after other people have done their parts of the job. And if they haven't set everything up a certain way, then it may not be optimal for us. For sure. So, for instance, a lot of video editing software, they can put everything in the sync that we want, but it's reliant on, you know, setting certain preferences and making sure of course. that's all set up. And often we don't get to have those discussions with people before they start doing the work. So um, yeah. why don't you share my screen and I can kind of show. Yeah, sure. Um, just but before I do that, oh, yeah. um, uh, um, uh, so I hear that you've uh, you've teamed up with the guys at Sound Radix. Yes, I well. have to give them and a so, massive shout out. Yeah, uh, great, great software. Love their stuff. I actually yeah. use Auto Align a lot for for drums and stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. When I'm working on music productions, but um, yeah, so you, uh, this is in kind of collaboration with uh, one of their products. It's the, the yeah other version of Auto Align. I might as well like give the backstory for that first because like it's kind of yeah. integral to the whole thing. Um, during COVID times, I had a show disappear 
like literally it got the plug pulled on it. So I, I was set to work on the show and uh, the, it got canceled before I went to camera. So I had some time to kill essentially. And I think that's when I started really getting into like, what can I do with Soundflow? Like, yeah. how do I t go deeper and deeper with it? Uh, so I was spending my days where I should have been, you know, trying to drum up other work with <laughs> learning how to use Soundflow. And at the same time, I was, uh, I had gotten the first version of Auto Align Post and uh, I had some suggestions or it was a bug fix, like something that made me reach out to the Sound Radix guys and, and say, hey, you know, I've experienced this thing or I have this idea. I don't remember exactly what it was. And they got back to me like super quickly. And, you know, we talked it through. They're, they're incredibly responsive and like very into engaging with their users, which was great. Fantastic. So, um, you know, we worked through whatever it is that I initially talked to them about. And then they said, hey, would you want to beta test our next version of AutoAlign, which is like AutoAlign Post 2? And I said, of course, like, I'm happy to play around with anything you want me to try out because that's a whole lot of fun. Uh, so I started using AutoAlign Post 2. And at the same time, I'm also learning how to use Soundflow more. And I got this idea of how I could make this product. Now, I can't say that like something like this did used to exist. Uh, for all of the post people that may be watching or with us, there used to be a great piece of software, like a cornerstone of what we do called Titan. And uh, I don't know if it was originally made by, um, who is it? Um, who makes Vocaline? Synchro Arts. Synchro, yeah. So Synchro Arts has like, it's their product. But for whatever reason, it hasn't survived the transition to 64-bit. Like, it just hasn't been updated. And now with new machines, it just doesn't run. And it used to do a lot of different things. But one of the things that it did was its feature called Fix Sync. And uh -huh. when 32-bit went the wayside, uh, you can no longer run the software. So no doubt you had, like, a, a, a separate old... Uh... Oh, yeah. Apple IIe in the corner um, running. <laughs> totally. It was like old G4, like, right. like, you know, the classic, like there's the machine that we boot up when we need to get something off of a tape backup or run Titan fixing. Great. Well, so, well may maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll share your screen and you can show us what, uh, what guideline does uh, that's, uh, that's like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Here goes. All right. So that's my Thank screen. You. So just to show, uh, by the way, stepping back a little bit, this is a show that I've worked on in the past. This is a typical 45-minute uh, TV show before any work has done on it. Uh, when I touched, Lots of tracks. Yeah. When I touched on earlier about, you know, assembling all of the audio files uh, in the way that they were in the picture edit, this is what that looks like totally raw, like nothing done to it. If you just bring in all the stuff, this is what it looks like. So I'll just focus on this first set of tracks. Now, anyone who's uh, a post dialogue editor probably knows this layout and knows what this looks like. This is a set of field recorder guide tracks. Like this is the mix track and that's the boom track. And here, let me turn off the group for a second. So that would be your mix track, which is uh, from the field recorder. The, the production sound mixer will generally do a mix on the fly so yeah. that if the video editor kind of wants to hear an approximation of what it's going to sound like in the end, they can listen to this track and then they split out all their ISOs. So there's a boom and then there's a, a character's lav and another character's lav and et cetera, et cetera. So these all belong together. Like there are a set of channels that play at the same time. Now, if I look at the picture editors track here, this is what they spit out of their system as being, you know, the what it sounded like in their system. And if you look at the tracks here, this one actually is in sync, so I don't have to worry about this particular clip. But if I go, say, over here, and I look at this, you can see that yeah. where the file came into my system, it's, it's, a little bit, off. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit late compared to what was in the picture edit track. And it's about a frame. It's about a frame yeah. late. So if I were to not correct this and that gets to the mix stage and they go, oh, does that look out? I don't know. Check it. Uh, is it in sync with the guide track? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit late. So uh, so going through and manually doing this one by one, like it sounds like an absolute nightmare. 
Yes. Uh, you've got like I don't know how many uh, sets of clips you've got there, but but that that could take you know hours and hours of work just Correct. to get it, and it would probably, it probably make like duplicates of everything when you're doing it. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know you might be inclined to say, well, if it's a frame out, just move everything by a frame. Well, that doesn't work because the difference might not always be that same difference. Like this clip may be a frame and this clip might be half a frame. Actually, it kind of looks almost like half a frame. Yeah, it does. And then this clip might be like, so you can't just like set it and forget it. Like yeah. in terms of like setting a nudge offset in Pro Tools and just nudging everything. Yeah. You're right. You do have to do each clip manually. And that's exactly what I don't want to have to do, which yeah. is why I wrote guide line. And let me just open it up here. This is what it looks like. And I tried to make it as easy to use as possible. So say one, I just want One wanna... button that seems uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to move, say, this into sample accurate sync with the guide track, I can just highlight it, hit start. It's going to ask me what track in my session I want to align it to. Uh, my guide track is conveniently called guide track. So I'm going to click that. It does its thing. And it's moved it. And now it's done. Fantastic. And I can look at it. Oh my God! It didn't work. Of course, it didn't work. It's it's probably is uh, you know a um the screen sharing issue. It uh, could be. Uh, yes, that that does happen. But let me try. Oh, let's try this one one more time, just to see. You've had this happen before in webinars. I have had it. Ha it happens with Zoom a bit, and uh, oh no! Um, All yes, right, well, yeah. let me try this one more time. <laughs> okay, pick guide track. Hilarious! It's totally not working right now. Maybe that, it's the thing. That's okay. I have I have used it and I and I have seen it uh, work and it worked hundred percent of the time. And if there's a bug, we can we can always uh, we can yeah always for sure. That let me, let sure. me just try this one here and see if there there's go. something to do with that. That is so funny. <laughs> Murphy's Al law. always the way, right? Yeah, always the way. Great. That looked like it worked. Yeah, yeah. that one worked. So if that great. worked. Yes. Great. Well, now I'm going to awesome. just, I'm going to try, you know what? Why don't I just do this whole thing real quick, just so I can feel good about myself. Bring and yes, there's a bit of a demo too, because you don't have to do one clip at a time. This will actually go through and do multiple clips. at a Great. Time. That, that works then. That definitely yeah. pulls it into line then. So, uh, so I see that it opens up um, uh, auto align post uh, two. Yeah. Uh, so, so obviously it requires the new uh, auto align post. Uh, is it 2.0.1? Yes, 2.0.1. So, uh, getting back to the discussion that I was having with the Sound Radix guys when we were, you know, working on uh, auto align post two, I said, Hey, I've got this idea for Soundflow app. Uh, is it possible that I could get some hooks into the program? and extract uh, some of the information in terms of like the, the sample timing between the source and the destination. And they totally said, yes, they're like, yeah, that's very easy for us to do here. Fantastic. And uh, yeah. So because of that, I'm using their plugin to figure out the difference between uh, the guide track and uh, the, the clips you want to process in samples. Mm -hmm. And then by using that, I use SoundFlow to automate nudging the clips, which is right. how I am able to move everything into sample accurate sync without creating new files and without um, processing anything. Of course, yeah. And so, just for me, now that that's done, you can go in and see that this is sample accurate. Sample accurate in sync. That's great. Very much in sync for all. So of the me. great thing about uh, it seems about um, uh, this is that when everything's aligned. You know, when you've got the the lav mics and you've got the the room mics, often I, I know that uh, uh, working with post audio before uh, is that um, sometimes you need to use more than one mic uh, just yeah. to make it sound like more full. Maybe the lavalier has like a a better like nasal quality than the boom mic, or there's not enough highs in the boom mic, or something like that. So having things in sync like this will allow you to like be able to make make it, it, the dialogue sound more rich and 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 everything so yes uh to be fair that's a slightly different thing than what we're doing here yes yeah uh, 
Cool. The, the auto aligning uh, with auto align post is you're taking different microphone channels and you're aligning them, aligning them internally so that they're all phase aligned with each other. Okay, so what, this is just simply the start, which is is uh, is getting everything synced up so that you can get into the into the weeds later. Yeah, this is moving all of the clips to be perfectly in sync with the guide track. Right. So that, um, for instance, say the director has gone into the edit suite and he thought that, you know, uh, or she, I should say, uh, the director thought that the, um, the sync looked a little bit out or yep. maybe it worked better by moving it out of sync. It looked better with say a f certain facial movement or something. Yeah. Great. Uh, and if, if that movement that they did in the edit suite is less than a frame, now the program, like the EDL that gets spit out, won't know that. Yes. So if you know the a producer or a director is really precious about certain things that they've adjusted in the edit suite mm -hmm. and they said, you know, that looks out. Uh when they hear the the playback, they're like, that looks out. Did you is that in sync with our guide track? Well, if you use the plugin and of course it then is. You, then you can say definitively, yes, it's absolutely perfectly in sync with what was in the picture edit. Yeah. Which is really like it does happen more than more often than you'd think. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. So it's one of those things where at least even if you decide to move it later, you can say, This is what it looks like perfectly in sync with the guide track. And then we made this decision not to do that, or we made the decision to keep it perfectly aligned with the guide track. Awesome, man. That's great. And uh, and so the uh, Pro Tools requirements is there a um, is there a Pro Tools re requirement at the moment? There, uh, I'll say that I've tested it in Pro Tools twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, and I'm I'm running it right now on the latest release with the latest plugin versions, whatever that is. I think it's still twenty twenty one twelve. Well, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, so I'm running it right now in 2021-12. I've okay. tested it in 2020. It could potentially work with earlier versions too. Uh, I just haven't tested it with earlier versions. Okay, so um, if I guess if anyone uh, uh, finds that it's not working with the earlier versions, they could uh, they could go to the um, the Soundflow forum and um, uh, go to the specific guideline forum. And, yeah. and and maybe just make a request there because uh, yeah, as as you said, I, and I concur with that thought that um, it could probably be made uh, backwards compatible um, with yeah, absolutely. I I know and I'm, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sure you've come up with, across this too. There there are little differences in how Soundflow interacts with different versions of Pro Tools. Yes, but it's course. usually just like a minor tweak that you have yep. to do to get it compatible. So. If anyone's out there and they're trying this on, you know, an earlier version of Pro Tools and it's almost working, but it, there's something wonky, let me know and I'll see if I can add support for earlier versions. For sure. So this uh, this program, uh, you, you would suggest it, no doubt, for dialogue editors uh, um, and maybe uh, effects editors? Have you... you know what? I, I have tried it on effects. And it generally works as long as the same sound exists in your reference tracks. Yes. And because the auto align plugin is really smart in being able to identify different sounds mixed in, mm -hmm. like if you're say aligning a door close to say a mixed sound effects track, it's actually pretty good at finding that thing mixed in with yeah. the isolated thing. So you can do it. Uh, I just don't really work in that world that often. So I haven't really put it through its paces as like aligning sound effects. Of course. But yeah. I mean, try it if you want. Uh, I should mention that it's a, there's a 30 day trial on it. Uh, oh, fantastic. So, so play with it. If you have auto align post 2.01 or greater, it should work. So feel free to play around. And I, it. And I believe that um, uh, auto align post also uh, has a, uh, I think it's a 14 day trial. Um, uh, so that works out well if you want to yeah. give it all a go. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great product anyway. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I can't say enough about the Sound Radix people. They're so, yeah. Awesome. From, They're really, from... really great to, to work with. And Daniel, Tal, and Bal, if you guys are out there uh, watching this, hello. And thank you so much for your help. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And uh, and tell me, how much does uh, Guide Align cost and where do you get it? 
Uh, you get it at the Soundflow store, yep. um, which is you know part. Of, if you if you have Soundflow already, and you you'll probably know that ecosystem. Uh, yep. So it's available on that store. I think as of when we started this webinar, three p.m. my time, mm -hmm. which is in Toronto. Uh, it's eight ninety nine per month or seventy four ninety nine per year. Great, awesome, awesome. So yeah, that's 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 really cool. Um, I guess uh, oh, we've got some uh, some questions I think that have come in. Uh, most of them are cool. just going woohoo. I think uh, people are very happy to. Um, oh, that's uh, great. Let me see. Let me read some of these. Um, uh, does it nudge all tracks into sync or move the group as one file? Uh, and this is uh, his. Uh, this is Paul Hammond, and he's asking. Uh, because booms uh, will be slightly later than the ISO. Right. Um, technically, what it does is it moves whichever track is on the top of your selection. If I if I do this, uh, it will take this track, the top one, as the reference track. So often, uh, when I'm using this myself, I use the mix track as my reference because it will have the the closest time balance, like time aligned. Uh, version that's in the uh, picture edit track. Uh, right. You could also do the boom track, uh, or if you wanted, say, the ISO to be the leading edge of the group, if you move it to the top of the selection, it will become the 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 master to which the whole selection gets moved by. Oh, that's that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, so uh, let me see uh, the other things here. A lot of people saying uh, ADR editors will love this. Um, uh, what have we got here? Yeah. Uh, so is this uh, auto-align rendering files or is it just moving no, clips? No, it's just moving the clips. It uses the information provided by auto-align to figure out how much it nudges by, but then it just nudges it within Pro Tools so it's not creating any new files or processing anything. Fantastic. That's, uh, yeah, it's going to be really, really helpful. Uh, you're welcome, Paul. Uh, any other questions, anyone? Please feel free to, to reach out. So uh, how much time do you reckon this would save you on a, um, you know, on a, on a feature film? Yeah. Uh, how about I just do a TV show? Because it's like the, so, yeah, last, let's do that. Yeah, the last time I show. ran this was on a television show. Uh, yep. It depends on how many cuts there are. Because like, and that works both ways. Like this is quicker to do if there's less cuts, but it's also quicker for someone to do manually if there's less cuts. Exactly. Um, let's say this this show with all of these clips, and let me just zoom it out here. Uh, I was able to auto align all of this stuff. It took about 18 minutes to do everything. And mm -hmm. if I had to do it by hand, sample accurately by hand, it would take hours and hours. That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, maybe someone out there is way faster at it than me, but like, yeah, it's it's I, exactly what you would expect. It would be selecting all this stuff and then, you know, nudging it and then nudging it and then go to the next one. And yeah, and, and listening it. out and yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so, so you, um, uh, th this would be like the first step when you when you import and, and start syncing up your uh, your audio files. You would uh, select your files, sync them up, and then you'd be ready to work. Yeah, exactly. And uh, another feature of, of Guide Align that I haven't touched on, uh, which is also pretty, in my opinion, time-saving, is that if it can't find the sample accurate sync, like for instance, say one of the files that gets pulled in when you do your conform or assembly conform, as we call it, what if it's the wrong file? Uh, or it's like the wrong part of the file. If yeah. Guide Align can't find that sync, it will drop a marker in your session. So it will tell you the stuff that you need to double check manually. Great. So maybe maybe like select a, a section of um, of audio here, yeah, and uh, and, and run it, and let's uh, let's see what happens. Maybe you can walk through what it's doing as it's doing it. Sure. You mean just like normal operation? Yeah, just normal operation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll grab this section here, and we'll do that. So. Again, it's going to ask me for which track in my session I want to align right. it to. I'm going to pick guide track. Excellent. So it does that. And now it's one by one. It's nudging all of the uh, 
the regions into sync with the guide track. Uh, on a micro level, what it does is it finds the offset and then it moves it the amount it thinks it should, and then it double checks it at the end. So it won't move on until into the next clip until it's guaranteed that the first clip is in sync. Right. Uh, it will try that five times in a row for each clip if it needs to. And after, yep. after the fifth attempt, it will abort and say, I couldn't figure out what the sync is. And you can see here that one of these clips, it wasn't able to find the sync. So Interesting. It, so it's just dropped a marker there that says uh, yeah. guideline could not... Uh... Could not sync clip. Yeah. Great. And cool. that can sometimes happen if, for instance, the say the picture editor and the guide track, they've taken this audio file and say they've uh, pulled it out like this and then faded it. Like, oh, of course, yeah. On something like this, which is sort of fundamental, like fundamentally. Are you hearing that when I do that? And uh, yeah, it's, it's fixed now. All right. So, um, say they did that in the picture edit suite. Uh, sometimes the difference that they cause in adding a fade, or say maybe a changing gain, or something like that, can be enough to throw it off. So mm -hmm. it won't be able to find the sync, even when looking at it, it's right. Like this is clearly right but auto align wasn't able to confirm it. So we'll yes. drop a marker just to tell you, look, just double check this for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, obviously, you know, if, if you're in the game, you know, you know how to deal with the issue when things, um, you know, exactly. And you need to do it manually and, uh, and that's great. Right. Awesome, man. So cool. uh, let me see. Uh, someone's written. Uh, slightly different, uh, uh, says I, I wonder if you can make a plugin or soundflow action that will replace music like when the picture editor cut uh, cut music in a piece and I want to replace it uh, for the original file or slightly remixed uh, what do you think of that is that something that it could possibly do I've never thought about it in that context and I think that would be that'd be a really interesting decision or uh, discussion to have with the sound radix uh, people in totally. terms of like, hey, how far can we push auto align yeah. post? Like, how you know what? Good? I feel I feel the best way to work it out uh, for this uh, this user who's asking this question is that um, they download the trial, uh, so download auto align, uh, and uh, and give it a go because that's yeah. Um, yeah I, I I think it would work. I, I like the the principle of it kind of matches you yeah know, if it's looking for transients and phase phase shift like that if there are elements that are similar enough and if it tries five times and it fails i guess it's uh it just needs to be done manually so yeah yeah i mean yeah. i imagine that the technology that we're dealing with here could be extrapolated out at some point to do something like that yeah but i don't know if what i've built in would work in that scenario but like you said it's worth trying like it's absolutely worth seeing what would happen totally and i know that you've put together a, a video on how to use the uh, uh the app and yeah. uh, you can find that on the description page uh if you select the guideline package once you've installed it in the um the packages list in soundflow uh you, it, you'll be shown the um the main page and there's a video there with the walkthrough so yeah, anyone wanting to know how to use it, check that out. Man, this is this is really great. It's uh, these kind of tools that uh, that we need more of in Soundflow, and especially when it's just one button to to click, and then it yeah. goes and does all the rest of the work for you. It's fantastic. So obviously, if uh, anyone has uh, any questions uh, for Dustin, uh, reach out on the uh, on the forum um, or um, even on you know anywhere where you can find Soundflow. Um, and we can uh, help you out with those questions. But um, but this is really great. And uh, thanks for joining us today, Dustin. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really cool to be able so to good. demonstrate yeah. this for the first time. Yeah, awesome. So I actually got one more question here. I think yeah. uh, I have auto align. Uh, it happened often here that I've resynced music uh, where they use uh, 20 seconds. And uh, yeah, so so yeah, someone's actually done that and and I have been able to achieve it. So oh, cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, like it, it makes total sense to, to try that. I had just never like it, that application didn't cross my mind at all, but now I'm going to go home and like, yeah, give it a go. It 
That's cool. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us um, for another Soundflow webinar. And uh, there's plenty more to come. Uh, next week, uh, we will be releasing, uh, well, actually, we won't be releasing. Uh, Andrew Sheps is going to be releasing through Pure Mix. Uh, his great new app, his insanely awesome new app, which is uh, uh, Bounce Factory. Uh, for those people wanting to bounce their mixes, uh, Bounce Factory is going to help you out a lot. So um, if you have any you know, questions about that, reach out on the forum. Uh, and uh, for those who don't have Soundflow yet, uh, we have a 30-day trial that you can start. Just head to soundflow.org and uh, to get started. But uh, rock and roll, everyone. And... We'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Kitch. Appreciate it. You're welcome, mate. Great to see Bye. you, mate. Bye, everyone. Bye.